Stop shallowing the golf club like this, you are wasting your time. Now recently, YouTube legend and golf pro Peter Finch came to us for a lesson. He was really struggling with his game, inconsistent shots left and right, and he was trying to get a little bit more shallow and from the inside to play a draw. Now in this video, we're gonna share with you two really simple tips that we did with him that made a huge difference that got him more from the inside, hitting consistent draws instantly. Where at the end, it had Pete saying, I think they might've just given the best lesson of their lives. <laughs> now what we actually took him through was our Pure Your Iron system, which you can get access to. The link is in the description, it is just launched. If we see his swing before the lesson, we can definitely see on the downswing that the shaft is steepening out, it's moving away from the plane, and he's continuing to swing down over the top of the plane. As soon as you're swinging over the top of the plane, you're gonna be inconsistent with your results. So Andy, let's just go into a, a little bit of what this can cause golf shot wise. Okay, so as we said, Pete was sort of out in front of the plane. And now what happens, Pete's a good player. So when the club gets in front of plane, what he'll naturally do is really he'll start to slow down, maybe even rise up. Now, as you do this, as you slow down, rise up and steepen out the shaft, we get a lot of face rotation yep. now pete gets a lot of face rotation very active through the golf ball here which can really just be very difficult con to control because there's so much going on now let's just help you understand really how we get shallow what are the things that influence it and we're going to keep it really simple think about it this way two components we've got how the body motion is going to work and then really how the hands and the arms work now what peter tried to do he said that i've tried to get shallower mm -hmm. he said i've tried to do it but he tried to do it with the hands and the arms. And we see a lot of golfers trying to do it, flexing the wrist, trying to get the elbow tucked in. But if you do this, it's gonna be so difficult and it's probably gonna ruin your golf swing. And what we did with Pete, we took control of how he moved his body and it was way easier that got him the result really fast. Yeah, and what I will say before we get into the analysis again with Pete is, this is the most important part. Forget everything else that you know, this is the most important part. Because if we see Pete's golf swing now, as he moves the club back, he keeps the club on plane beautifully as he starts the, uh, starts the backswing. But then the club and the arms start to lift away from the plane a lot. So when he gets to the top of the backswing, a marker that we like to draw is a vertical line from the butt of the golf club. And we'll use this line when we show you improvement in his golf swing. But you can see that line is going into the toe area of his right foot. But also when we look at this, and this is where the smile on myself and Andy's face happened when we saw him hitting shots at the beginning of the session because he's hardly got any hip turn. He's only got 34 degrees of hip turn. You can see that through the Sportsbox AI app. Now, when you're limiting your hips like that, that club naturally is always going to raise up and straight away there's gonna be steepness and over the top put into the golf swing. Doesn't matter how hard you try and shallow the golf club, if you do, then it's just gonna, it's just gonna be so hard to yeah. control. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna get Andy to emulate Pete's golf swing and do a swing where he's hardly turning the hips and think of nothing else in the actual shot. So the arms will be high because the be there's nowhere for them to go. And we'll take a look at the path, what we've got we'll on full swing here. Yeah, we'll get a slow-mo in there as well. Again, quite steep in the <laughs> turf there, a low squeezy fade. Yeah, Lack that's of what Pete power. was doing. That's what Pete was doing. Lack of power and the path is 7.7 .7 left on that one. So that's, a long way left. That's a long way left. So if you're somebody who swings left and over the top, what we went through with Pete is really gonna help you. So the main goal with Pete was was to get at the top of the backswing to get the arms a little bit more around so when the butt so when we draw a line from the butt end of the club it passes more through the heel line and how we did that was with sort of how we move the body and the legs the legs is crucial we're going to share with you a couple of very simple things that you can do which is so important now the first thing i want you to think about when it comes to how we rotate think about this think about turning from the belt buckle to the midpoint of the chest it's not just hips it's not just shoulders. If you can move this part, it is massively going to help you create a better turn. So that's the first look thing at, I Look say. at the difference though, just by doing that. It's unbelievable how much rotation here. Everything is looked after. The hands and arms have got to be really bad for, to, to mess this up now almost. Exactly. So the first thing is on the, on the ground. Let's look at what the feet are doing. This is the most important thing to start with is that if you get the right foot super square like this, it is very hard to rotate. For the majority of golfers, it is going to help them if this foot is somewhat flared out, because as we do this, it opens up the hip and creates a little bit of space. And you can do this just standing up at home now, yeah, try, try and make now. a backswing with this square on or even turned in, and then do it with the foot open, and you are gonna see how much freedom you've got. And I hit a shot now and just flare that foot out excessively, and you'll just, I'll just feel the difference in this. Even with 
Even some golfers who've had up to 20 degrees more hip turn just by flaring the foot out a little bit more. So just focusing on that, my path there was 1.4 to the left as opposed to 7.7 <laughs> to the left. So let's just advance this a little further on now and talk about the legs. And these, these two things are, are really important. The first thing we're gonna pay attention to, which Pete did, is what the left knee did, the front knee. So Pete's golf swing from face on, we'll see that the, the front knee didn't really move that much. And when if, if I don't move this front knee and try and swing to the top of the backswing, that is as far as I can go. Now look where the butt of the club is and look how short the swing is. Now watch this. If I allow the front knee to turn in, look at the difference what in difference. turn, but look where the butt of the club is down. When the butt of the club is here, we now have space for the club to swing down. Do that again, because if we actually just go where there's no turn, do the peak backswing for me, we can see that knee absolutely is pointing outside of the ball. Would it be fair to say that pointing your knee more at the ball Definitely. is a good thought? It's working back almost behind the golf ball, I feel. Yeah. And now we've got, look at the difference in turn, I'm facing the camera here, <laughs> and it's just, it feels so much more free. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let me, hit, well, let's hit one of those, because I think we can get that path a little bit to the right by just doing that with that Definitely, so knee. flare the foot, watch this knee on this shot. Yeah, definitely more. Totally Definitely different shot, higher, higher, higher shot as well. Drawing. Let's have a look at that. Well, here yeah, now. a little bit of draw. Path yeah. 1.2 to the right. No, nice. So again, you, these things really mm. make a difference. We're back in the feelings up with the numbers here. Yes. It's, it's crucial. And That's, the ball flight as well. Obviously the exactly. ball flight as well. Let's take a look at this leg now. So another really important component that Pete tended to do, he'd swing back and he would have a lot of flex in this leg at the top. Now, if we can allow the, the leg to straighten a little bit, in the swing, notice now what it does. When we hold the flex into this leg, it's very hard to turn the hips. So by just allowing a little straightening, you can see how the hips now turn. We're not dead locking the, the leg out. We're still creating some tension, but we're just allowing a little bit of straightening. If you look at DJ at the top of the golf yeah. swing, this right leg is nice and sort of extended up and he's got loads of space on the way down. It's interesting as well, because we'll let Andy hit a shot here, but. Pete's goal swing, a lot of it's modeled on old tendencies and styles. So there was a point when we probably coached to have a right leg that stayed flexed and a left knee that didn't move in and not a lot of hip turn. That's okay if you're Rory McIlroy and you've got a, an elastic spine, but if you're Peter Finch and Andy Proudman, it's maybe not so good. But Andy Again. is flexible, he is flexible, obviously. Let's take a look at the numbers on that one. It wasn't quite the best strike on that clean. one. A little clean. But numbers are gonna be relatively close to zero, I'd say. 1.6 left. Let me have another one. Yeah, do another one. Just going to see if I can get that working a little bit more to the right. So, so. focus on this one is the right. Right leg and left leg. Oh, everything. Both, <laughs> both legs working together. That was better. There's that nice high draw on that one. That's what that Pete was has doing. has to be different on that. Has to be different. Yeah, club path 1.4 degrees to the right now. So we can see the club just getting a lot nearer the plane when you do this motion. One thing that I'm going to add to this as well, one thing that I've been doing a, a bit more over the last few years is actually putting the focus into the legs like Andy is, but almost from a turning point of view. We talk about hip turn, we talk about how much we can rotate the pelvis, but actually thinking about if you put a club across your legs like this and you've got your legs rotating, that's okay. You can actually get a club across your legs and, and push the right leg back and let the left leg come forward. This is again telling us that we're getting a lot more rotation here. And it's so, it's so powerful this is because once this area here is sorted out, the knock-on effect is huge, isn't it? We want golfers to move a lot. Oh, please move. Move a lot, but please move in a good move. way. We don't want you moving a lot this way. We want you moving a lot in this way, in a rotational yeah. element. So I'm gonna do that now, hit the shot. Let's, get, let's get the thighs working. Get the thighs working. This is one of the things we talk about in Pure Your Irons, in the system with Pure Your Irons, in that we want to replace bad movement with good movement. That's pretty good. A little low maybe, but a little bit clean again, Andy. Yeah, a little clean. So let's actually look at the before and after of Pete. So we can now see as he is swinging the club back, he is much nearer the plane throughout the whole backswing. When he gets to the top of the backswing, we can see he's got a much fuller hip turn and his arms are deeper. He has now got the line coming down from the butt of the golf club going into the heel, just like Andy wanted. As a result now, as he turns the power on, again, the club spends a lot more time nearer the plane. This is why he was hitting high, beautiful draws. And it was the best lesson of his life, don't forget. It is. Now, as we mentioned, we took Pete through our Pure Your Irons coaching system, and you can get access to that. Click the link in the description, and don't forget to download the Me and My Golf app for all our best content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.